so if you've watched any of my videos, you probably already know. OpenHab is one of my favorite solutions for home automation, and the reason is the flexibility. I also like the fact that it's an open source software, and obviously there's a ton of people that are working really hard to make it something that they want for themselves. Being that it's open source, they're pretty much developing it for the features and for the way they'd want to use it, which is often the way I would want to use it. Now, before any of you jump into the comments, and I know you will and you tell me how hard it is and it's difficult and it's not for everyone and you have to be technical, um, I, I agree to an extent, and that is that I think there's the right tool for everybody. For example, my, my parents use a Wink Hub and, and, and I think that's great and it's all they need. They have a few lights that turn on at night, they turn off, they're on a schedule, they don't really touch it. So if you're looking for something simple like that, my actual recommendation would be a SmartThings Hub. I think it's a fantastic platform um, and it does quite a bit. I, I got links to all these below. Go ahead and buy one of those if you think that's all you're going to want to do. What I want to do today is take a minute to show you uh, the most recent build of OpenHab and how simple it is to set up. And again, I know you guys are already starting to type. OpenHab has reached a point where the setup is so simple and you can get it up and running using no config files. Everything can be done from a graphical user interface from the web. You can install your bindings, you can install your, your files, you can install everything you need to do. You can even create some basic rules similar to what you would do in SmartThings from the web. Now the big benefit to using OpenHab is if you ever think you're going to want to go a little bit further, you're going to want to add some logic, you're going to want to add some conditions, you're going to want to play around with it a little bit, all of that opportunity is there. If you decide you want to buy something or extend your system that is not an out-of-the-box solution like SmartThings or Wink is going to offer you, OpenHab can do that for you and you can learn some more, you can jump and you can expand. So the only thing I would suggest is if you're looking to get started in home automation or you're looking to do a bit more than you can do right now, OpenHab is a great look. Let's jump into the interface together. We're going to set it up super simple and then you can make up your mind for yourself. And then if you want, you can leave some comments because you know what? I like the comments. I really do. I just want to make sure you guys have all of the information that you need. Okay, guys. So this is super simple. Um, OpenHab can be installed on pretty much anything. You can install it on this, 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 or this. Any old PC running Linux, running Windows, any older Mac, newer Mac, whatever. You can even use the computer that you use now. If all you want to do is jump into this and try things out, see if it works for you, run it on the computer you're working on right now. It'll be fine. So, super simple. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to first go and install Java on the computer. Uh, Java is uh, super easy to do. We're not using the Sun system. We're going to use an open source version of Java called Zulu. This is the recommended version and it's super easy to do. So before we get started, uh, just so you guys know on this computer, I am running a fresh clean install of Hi Sierra. Uh, the only thing I've installed on it is Chrome and screen capture software so I could make this video and off we go. So download the Zulu. Now Zulu 9 is available. We're not using that right now. The recommended version is Zulu 8. I provided a link here. There's also a link down in the description um, and I've got all of this written up on my website yoyonose.com so if you want to go check that out feel free and I'll have all the links there. So click on that link. It's going to start downloading to your computer. The other thing I'm going to download is OpenHab. Um, the link I provided here is the most up-to-date. This is considered the daily version. This is what I prefer to use. Uh, you can also use the 2.2 release version, which is kind of the, the stable. I don't find much of a difference. I find the dailies work great, uh, and it always gives me the, the up-to-date feature. So th that one's up to you, but for the purpose of this, go with this one. It's super simple. I've used it. It works great. I provided a link right there for you. So go ahead and download both of them. So as soon as those two are done and they're sitting on your computer, we're going to want to click on the Java link and we can say open. And what that'll do is it'll open a little window on your computer. It's a little bit of a wizard. It's going to walk you through the instructions and off it goes. It installs in your computer. It might ask you for a password. You might have to say next a few times, but otherwise you're good. So once that's finished, I want you to reboot your computer. So now we're rebooted, we're back up and running, and I want you to go into that download directory and I want you to double click on the OpenHab file we installed. And it was downloaded as a zip file, so it's going to extract to that same folder, it's going to create a folder called 
open hub. And this is probably the most technical part of the whole entire setup, so bear with me. I want you to click on the magnifying glass in the top corner of your computer. And what that does is it opens up the search on a Mac. And once you have that open, I want you to type terminal. And that's going to open a little white box. Now don't worry about this, we're not going to do anything too crazy. Um, this is where you would go to do some command line stuff on your computer, but we're, we're really not going to do anything. All we're going to do is start OpenHab. Next I want you to double click on that OpenHab 2.3.0 snapshot folder and I want you to find the file that says start.sh and all you're going to do is you're going to drag that start file over into the little white window, the terminal that we just opened and then you're going to click on that white window and you're going to push enter and as soon as you do that it's going to launch the OpenTab runtime, this is the OpenHab program and it is going to take it down to a command line and that's it, that's all we need to do right now, OpenHab is now up and running on your computer, that was it, That that's how simple it is. Let's go ahead and open up a uh, Chrome browser and in the toolbar I want you to type localhost Volkwolen, that's two dots, 888080 and hit enter. You should see a web page that loads and it should have a bunch of icons, simple, standard, expert and demo. The one we're going to run today is standard and that is the recommended setup and all we're going to do is click on that big uh, icon that says standard and the browser may come back and ask you for your location. This is totally up to you. If you don't want to, say block. If you say allow, all this does is it lets the setup procedure know approximately where you are for things like time zone and stuff like that. And the next screen you should say would be welcome to OpenHab 2. And you should see four icons, Home Builder, Paper UI, Basic UI, and Hab Panel. And what these are are the default interfaces that are installed. All right, so you did it. You're up and running. OpenHab is fully installed and set up on your computer. At this point, if you want to compare it to, say, SmartThings, you've taken SmartThings out of the box, you've plugged it up, you've installed the app on your phone, you went through the setup wizard, and you're at the same place now as you would be with SmartThings. So now it's time to start taking some of those hot home automation devices that you have and telling OpenHab about them the same way that you would tell SmartThings at this point. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and click on that paper UI icon and that's going to take us into the interface and it'll go right into the inbox. And the inbox is where you go to set up new devices or where OpenHab will actually automatically discover new devices. So we're going to go ahead and click on add-ons and then we're going to click on bindings. This, this is the list of all of them. And, and for the first one here, we're going to scroll down and we are going to find... Life X. These are light bulbs, color changing light bulb. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to click on the install button right next to Life X. And that is it. Now, if you notice, right in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you're going to see new inbox entry. And what that is, is OpenHab has already installed that and it is starting to find them. And if you look up at the inbox icon, you're going to see it popping up numbers. Now, of course, this is that you have. LifeX bulbs on your system. If you don't, you're going to want to start with one of the other ones, maybe Hue or Sonos, and, and they're all just as simple. Sure enough, when we hit the inbox, we're going to see it's found a bunch of my LifeX lights, um, a desk light, a globe light, original bulbs, a printer, one of my light strips. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the little check mark on them. I can go ahead and rename them at this point. I typically leave them the same name just because that's what I've got them named in the LifeX app. Helps me match them up later. But I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark next to all of them and that will add them to OpenHab. I'll go all the way and inbox should say empty again. And that's it guys, you just set up your LifeX light bulb. So click on the control tab right above inbox and you should see in here all of your light bulbs that we just found. You're going to see that you have controls for color, or brightness, temperature, it's going to give you signal strength for some of them. Uh, depending on the different capabilities of the bulbs, you may have some different options. But uh, feel free, go ahead, move one of those sliders around, try to turn one on or off, and you're up and running. Your, your LifeX bulbs are good to go. So guys, that's it. Super easy and like I said, just like setting up smart things or anything like that, this part of it is really easy. Now, go ahead, you can set up some other bindings if you want, Sonos or Chromecast or Hue light bulbs, all of those are there. There's, like you saw, there's hundreds there, feel free to take a look. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to install the rules engine. This is going to allow us to set up rules in the user interface, graphical user interface, without needing to use any config files.
Um, so this is super awesome. This is still fairly new to OpenHab, but it can do quite a bit. And if you never wanted to leave this, you could do all of your rules in there. But as we progress, I want to continue to take a look at some more advanced things that we can do in OpenHab. So hopefully as you learn this and you get comfortable, we'll get you into the rules engine. Then we'll start looking at config files, setting up dashboards, persistence, things like that. So guys, hopefully you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so that I know it's the type of thing you want to see. And if you haven't already subscribed, and other than that, I'll see you in the next video.